Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, May 26, 2020. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the board? What's on the docket today? Pretty interesting stuff. So the market actually did the thing that it was setting up to do. It ate time off the clock. It ran sideways underneath the 100 period moving average for about four or five days. And like a thief in the night during the holiday weekend while the futures were opened and the rest of the markets were closed, they stole the upside while everybody wasn't looking. We know that routine. We've talked about it before. We've seen it before. We're going to see it again. But there's a couple of questions that immediately get put right on the table. Is that all the upside we're going to see? After all, there's a gap at 302.46. Did they hit the gap today or did they not hit the gap today? The answer is they did not hit the gap. Did they come all the way this way, all the way up to 302 and change to miss the gap? 302.19 was the high today. Did they come all this way to miss it by 27 cents? Most likely not. However, there's stuff on the table. We have stuff to discuss. We're going to discuss a lot more when we break down the charts and look at some of the intraday activity to see what actually happened in the beginning of the day and then at the end of the day. And at the end of the day is where the real important stuff happens because it's not necessarily how they trade them all day, even how they open them. But what's really important is how they close them. What is the closing print of the day? That's what's most important every single day. So there's a little synopsis. Now let's backpedal a little bit and say, hey, What's the main thing or things that jump off the page? What jumps off this chart at me? Well, it's pretty obvious. We talked about it already. It's the gap at 302.46. It's the market above the moving averages, yet closing below the 200 period moving average. That does stand out to me a little bit. I'm not sure it's a huge deal. The other thing that stands out to me is the tail low today, which comes all the way down to right around where this gap is left open from Friday's close. So Friday's close happens to be 295.44. Today's tail low comes in at 295.46. But the question is, was the market really down at 295.46? There's 295.46, which represents today's low. Here's a 15-minute chart, and you'll notice the market was nowhere near that price today. So what is that? What does that represent? Why does that happen? A lot of you will send emails to that effect, and really there is no reason. There's speculation. We can certainly call it shenanigans. It will likely disappear, whether it be tomorrow, whether it be the next day. It all depends on what price does with this market. So it basically comes down within a couple of cents of the gap. So therefore, and this is the same routine, we had one of these last week, I believe. We don't really need the tail. We don't need the low. We know where the gap is. And if price is heading toward that direction, we know under normal garden variety conditions, they're going to get some semblance of support in and around that gap. That's the way markets work. We should expect no different. 80% of the time versus 20, it's the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time, the market's going to do the same thing over and over and over again. And you'll see that pop up when I get down to some of the intraday charts. And then we'll take a look at what the market is likely doing. And then you'll scratch your head and say, oh yeah, there's probably another aha moment that's ready to slap me in the face. So let's back up a little bit. So last week, the market basically, after gapping up, It goes sideways all week long. We talked about this ad nauseum at the week went on. We said that as long as they continue to consolidate or eat time off the clock underneath the moving averages, it's setting up for another push higher. And guess what? The market tried to go down, had an opportunity to go down many, many times. But guess what? It never did go down. And when that happens, what's the alternative? Well, if it's not going to go down, what's it going to do? It's going to go up. It's going to release the energy in the upward direction. We've talked about this many, many times. We've seen this many, many times. Here it is again. Now let's look at things from a different perspective. Here's an hourly chart. It's the same stuff that we saw on the daily chart. So the market went sideways all week long last week. Gave the appearance of a breakdown a couple of times. Never happened. So what happens if the market 
comes back down into this zone. Let's just say, for argument's sake, common sense would be they're going to fill the gap. Maybe they spike it by a little bit, but for all intents and purposes, for the purpose of this conversation, they're going to fill the gap. What will they be doing from another perspective other than filling the gap? They would be coming back to double check or check in at a former breakout area. The most former, the most recent breakout area. Market went sideways all week, broke up during the holiday in the futures. So this morning, Tuesday morning, the market opens, it breaks to the upside. Now they're coming back, whether they get all the way back to check in at the gap, to check in at the former breakout area, whether they get all the way back down here on Wednesday or Thursday, that remains a mystery. Inside the numbers, members will have a beat on that early in the morning, bright and early, in uniform, ready to go. But here, the night before, we're talking about things from a daily chart perspective, an hourly chart perspective, from a conceptual standpoint. We're reading the tape. The tape reading activities are a little bit different intraday than they are after the market closes. Another perspective, remember this chart, the 240-minute chart. We looked at this a couple of times last week. Basically, price was going sideways. That's it. Underneath the 200-period moving average, today they broke up. They went to fill the gap. They missed the gap by a smidgen. That really is courtesy of the trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew. We all know about that. Traders who are along the market may be looking for an exit at the gap. They never get there and they end up having to take a different price. Or there are traders waiting for the gap, waiting to short the market at the gap. And guess what? They never get there. So let's just say they pull back for a day, two days, three days, whatever it is. Let's say that happens. Then will they go fill the gap? And the answer is that will likely happen unless. And what's the unless? Let's go back to the daily chart for the unless and we're going to bring out a number from last week 291.95 if they begin getting below and closing hourly and then certainly daily below 291.95 then that entire concept of just coming back to check in at the former breakout area and missing the gap by a smidgen and then going back up to get the gap and likely higher that whole scenario that whole storyline would be off the table with a hourly and then daily close below 291.95. What does 291.95 represent? It represents the low from the 19th of May, 291.95. Get below that and you're coming into the 20 period moving average. However, getting below that is not part of the current bull schematic and you're likely on the way to fill this gap down here, which comes in at 286 and change. That's out over the skis, but that's projecting the what-ifs because you don't have the benefit of intraday analysis unless you, of course, are an Inside the Numbers member. What a lead-in. Very nice of me to do that for myself. Let's give you a snapshot of what was going on Inside the Numbers, regardless of what happened in the commentary, regardless of how active or non-active, like today, being quiet with the gap higher, the market was, there's still stuff going on, there's still lessons to be learned, and by the way, there were still stocks on the move. So we talk a little bit about the holiday weekend thieves. They're the ones that jammed the market up while nobody was looking, having their weekend barbecue. Now we've got something to sink our teeth into, per se. We've got the big fat round number of ES3000 and SPY300. They're pretty obvious numbers, and we know they're psychological numbers. The market's going to want to stay above those numbers, which essentially it did all day long until the very end. They gave up the ghost into the close. Instead of an end-of-the-day jam session, they had an end-of-the-day pull-the-rug-out, open-the-trap-door session. And the end-of-the-day jam session was dependent upon the market closing hourly above a certain number. You'll find that in the commentary. So any trader that may have jumped the gun or tried to anticipate an end-of-the-day jam session got a pie in the face, which is really part and parcel to the reason why I put those specific things up on the board. So a couple of things early on that we do know. The market had that thing over the weekend. They're jamming it up. They're gapping higher. We also know they're going to have a beginning of the day or 
an appearance by Trick and Company for an early shakeout operation. You have a couple of factions that show up in the morning. You have the FOMO crew. They want to hop on board. They think they're missing something, so they want to hop on the trade. They're the ones who immediately, most days, get the rug pulled out first. The second ones that get the trapdoor treatment are the ones that try to buy the first pullback. Most days, it looks like they're right for a few minutes, and then they get a pie in the face. By the time they capitulate out of the short-term position, the shakeout operation is generally coming to a close at what a lot of times look like a morning low. Let's scroll up a little bit, see what's what. So we know right out of the shoot, because they're gapping up a lot, there's nothing we can do. They leave us no choice. Our eyes are on 302.46. Now, if they filled 302.46, and even if they went a little bit higher, were we expecting the market to keep going, or under normal garden variety conditions, would they find overhead resistance at the gap? And that's the answer. Should be overhead resistance, can spike through a little in the morning rush, but should be overhead resistance. Well, they never got there. 935, here comes the big fat round numbers. Putting things in perspective, here is a pit session five minute chart of the ES futures contract. Market opens up, comes immediately down to what? About 3,000. The low in this candle here, 3,075, bounces back up, does it again later, bounces back up. We know the psychological importance of 3,000 and SPY 300. Now, there's a disparity between the two. One's a futures contract, and therefore, it's going to change each and every day as we get closer to futures expiration. It's not an exact 10 to 1 ratio, meaning, for example, SPY times 10 should equal the S&P 500, but with the futures contract, there's a slight differential. And let me just point out how that works. Here we are within a point to 3,000 early in the morning, and then we come through 3,000 and make a low of 29.96 later. This is about 11.50 in the morning, right before lunch. Let's scroll up a little bit first, and then we'll go back to the chart. So what you'll see here is at 9.55, show times for the bull to stay hourly above 29.94. Don't forget, here's the 9.35 post you saw that in the 935 post now we go over to the spy chart and you'll see that second dip right around lunchtime was what right at 300 the low in this candle happened to be 299.90 and then the market went back up you never know which one is going to come into the psychological big fat round number first which one second or both essentially at the same time one spiking through the other one get there they do this kind of stuff over and over and over again. That's one of the reasons, one among many, of why I watch both charts. There are a lot of reasons why I watch both charts. A lot of reasons why I come up with the numbers from both charts. I use all charts, continuous contract, pit session only, SPY, all kinds of stuff. You have to be willing to work harder than everybody else to find the type of success that nobody else can. That's the way this business works. Now, those are a couple of extremes, but it makes the point. All right, now let's see what else we had throughout the day from the commentary perspective. And what I urge you to do is read the notes, stop the video, take a few seconds, a minute, read the notes, and then start it again and do it over and over and over again, rinse and repeat. So I'm scrolling, you stop the video, read the notes, because if you're at all active with the market during the day, and today was not a great example because the market didn't go anywhere. It basically went sideways. We had what was an important resistance up above, and the market really never even got there. This was a secondary resistance after the morning high. And then we knew what was important on the downside, and we knew what would happen if they broke a certain number. So here we go. I'm scrolling again. Go ahead and do your thing. Read the notes if you're at all interested or curious what's going on here throughout the trading day. So here we go into the afternoon. And as the day went on, it got quieter and quieter. And then the market moved into the last hour of the day. There's not enough time to do anything. Had they done that type of movement earlier in the day, it may have produced a trade or two. But into the close, very hard. You never know how they're going to whip the market around into the closing bell. Hey, 
What about stocks on the move? Let's take a look at the two opportunities. That's right. We only had two opportunities on the board. Why is that? One of the main reasons, if not the main reason, is because the market was gapping higher. It's after a three-day holiday weekend, so it's like a Monday on steroids. So everything is getting a float kind of into no man's land. So we only had two opportunities that presented themselves from the scanner this morning, PLAN and ZM. So let's take a look at those charts. Both hit their entries, incidentally. Let's see what we can learn from both of these trades. First, we'll start with plan and a plan. This was a pretty significant haircut at the open. The stock closed at 5104, and in the first few minutes of the day, the stock made an attempt but came up short. Had a pretty decent bounce away, which this will keep a lot of traders away from the trade because it's like coming in for a second time. This is definitely the type of bounce away when we reach destination and they go in the other direction. This is the type of rocket ride that we're normally looking for. But look what happened. You never know exactly what's going to happen with these. But the takeaway from this one is look at the importance of the number, notwithstanding the fact that they pulled up short right out of the gate. The low here was 46.80. Then they came back for a second attempt. What was the low? 46. 62 what was the low on the board at about 7 30 in the morning 46 62 how do you do that we do it over and over and over again we don't always hit them to the penny like that but we do it a lot then they made a better or a more adult attempt to get into that area and really test that area and then you can see they traded away from that area once again but they did it really three times first they come up short bounce away Second time they hit it to the penny, bounce away. Look at this bounce. What's the high here? High is 47.86. That's in minutes. Then after the adult testing took place, they went for another run up over 48 bucks. Goes to show you the importance of the numbers. How about Zoom? This one comes up a lot. This one's in play a lot. It's like a reverse coronavirus trade. When coronavirus is in the news and the market is down, Zoom and others are up. When the market is up because nobody cares about coronavirus or we assume everything's going to be fine, the country's going to open back up, all that stuff, nobody wants Zoom. How does this one work out? Here's the closing price from the other day, 171.05. Little bit of a buzz cut at the open. On the board, bright and early, 167.20. You can see what happened in the first five-minute candle of the day. The low is 167 on the button. The next candle is a rocket ride up to what? making a high of 169.40 in minutes. Then what happened? They worked their way down to what? The second price that was on the board at what? 7.31 in the morning. 164.65. What was the low in this candle? 164.05. What happened? They went right back to the second number. Here's your rocket ride making a high of 167.76. You can also see the importance of both these numbers they created a channel for a chunk of the day. Pretty incredible. If you just sit back for a moment and think about where do these numbers come from? School of Hard Knocks is really the answer, but they're there for the taking, folks. They're inside the numbers and stocks on the move day in, day out. They're not a falling knife. When stocks are falling, they're headed to a destination. When stocks are rising fast, they're headed to a destination. Slower fast, they're headed to a destination. Once they get to the destination, one of two things happens. They either turn around and go back the other way, or they hang around for a cup of coffee because they're headed to another destination. The third option isn't on the table because the third option is, hey, what happens if they cut through the price like a hot knife through butter? Then the destination was wrong. Yeah, that's right. That means this trader was wrong. Does it happen? Of course it happens. Does it happen a lot? No. Is it going to happen tomorrow because I said that? It might. Let's go back to the SPY for a moment. We'll look at the hourly chart and we'll say this. What's the likelihood they're going to fill the gap? It depends on how they open them tomorrow. What happens if they open them below today's close? Then the odds increase they're going to fill the gap. What happens if they open above the high of the last hourly candle? then the odds decrease significantly that they're going to come fill the gap and they're right back where they were before the last hourly candle of the day. 
So that's the best thing I can tell you the night before. We have to see where they're going to open them tomorrow. It's a huge tell. Inside the numbers, I'll have a beat on it, bright and early, in uniform, ready to go. What's the scoop down at Camp IWM? Same routine, we have the shenanigan tail down to the gap. Is it telling us they're going to go fill the gap? It doesn't matter. If they're headed towards the gap, that's what they're going to do. Go fill the gap. That would be the duck only until and unless an ugly duck was uncovered telling you something else. You always go with the obvious. You always go with the duck until it turns into something else. That's essentially how to use the 80-20 rule. The majority of the time, the obvious thing happens. We're in one of those scenarios where, again, it's all the same market. They're all going to trade together in the same direction, not necessarily to the same magnitude. But check this out. The IWM was up 3% today. Even with the late-day decline in the SPY and across other markets, the S&P 500 was up about 1.5%. The IWM two times outpaced the SPY on percentage terms. Even with the end-of-the-day sell-off, we have to take note of that. That's important stuff. That's a puzzle piece. That's on the table. Did you have a late-day decline in the IWM? Yeah, sure you did. All the markets are basically trading together. All the same market. Money flows in, money flows out. Look at this. Let's start with the hourly chart with the folks down at the transportation department. Does this look the same as the other two? Does it look the same as the IWM, which incidentally is my favorite market leading indicator? What are the transports? My second favorite market leading indicator, but a number one, a numero uno canary in the coal mine. Does this hourly chart look the same? No, it doesn't. Look at this for a moment. It was up 5% today. You crazy? What's it going to do? All of a sudden collapse tomorrow and come all the way back down to fill the gap? Probably not. This is headed somewhere. Was today it? It's unlikely. Where's it headed? Likely the 100 period moving average, but likely a little more. We'll call it 9200 for argument's sake. We may have already even talked about that number. I really don't remember. But if we did, we likely did last week. What about the Qs? What about the folks out in Silicon Valley? How about that reversal? Is this in and of itself grounds to shit your pants? Obviously, the pants scenario comes in if you're long the market. If you're short the market, you want the demand for depends to go up. Well, let's take a look at this from an obvious perspective. What did the Qs do today? They went up to run a test of a breakdown candle high. What am I talking about? The high from the 21st of February happens to be 234.01. The high today wasn't 234.01, but it was close. The high today was 233.57, so they were in the neighborhood, in the vicinity of the breakdown candle high. Is that it? Is that all they're going to do? Are they going to leave the gap right above that unattended to? Maybe for a day, maybe two, but they'll likely fill the gap unless they collapse. However, what did we talk about last week? Maybe over the weekend video. The cues were a little bit extended from what? Home base. What's home base? The 20 period moving average. They're way above all the moving averages. Is there anything really negative on this daily chart? No, it's in an uptrend, so they might have a down day or two or three, but being above all these moving averages, there's nothing wrong with the Qs. So guess what? So some money rotated out of the tech space today, but there's technically nothing wrong with this chart. There's two sides to the coin. You have to look at both. Be the umpire. How about the XLF? Remember, without the financials, it's unlikely the market's going to get very far in either direction. What did the financials do last week? They ate time off the clock right above the 20-period moving average. We talked about it, and here is the result. 5.5% move higher. That's likely, since it's not at the high or a high on the chart, it's likely not an exhaustion move. But look at this volume. Over 100 million shares just today in the XLF. Last time you had 100 million shares, what happened? Let's go back and get a point of reference. Here was a top. Okay, fair enough. Here was a bottom. So you have both. So what does that tell us? Nothing. It could be either or. What do we do when that scenario takes place? We don't know. It could be either or. We go to another chart. What's the weekly chart telling us? Totally different picture. The weekly chart 
is in a downtrend, a very strong downtrend. Now, the market may want to reach, before this is all said and done, near or at its 20-period moving average. That will be a moving target as it's sloping down and it will creep down each and every week. What's the formula and how do you do that? That's really everything that the Lazy E-Mini Trader course is built around. How'd you like how I slipped that one in the side door? What about Smash Mouth? What's it telling us? Well, we have another crap out. It was a gap and crap in Smash Mouth, a gap and crap in the queues. So Smash Mouth being the SMH, the semiconductor space, is a good indicator of the queues. So they were both basically trading together today. It looks like they want to fill the gap. Odds on they'll fill the gap, but keep in mind the trend is up and there's technically nothing wrong with this chart from a daily chart perspective. So we know a couple of things. There's some gaps down below that can certainly be filled with some more weakness coming into Wednesday. But if we wake up to another gap up in the morning and this was just some end of the day profit taking, including a visit by the Trick Trap Fool and Frustrate crew, then the band will play on in the northern direction. Depends on how they open them, depends on how they trade them overnight, depends on what the thieves in the night want to do. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? How much you're responsible for these videos? Without you, they're not possible. That's true and accurate information. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.